All right. Um, I guess uh, today in this tutorial, I want to cover a different type of clipping, uh, a little more advanced, a little more difficult. Um, it's indoor clipping, but it's not restricted specifically to indoor scenarios. So I think I want to refer to it more collectively as um, uh, one frame clipping or uh, it's the kind of clips that you would select buffer because there's no easier way to do it. Um, unless you can do other more difficult types of buffers, but I'll go over the different types of buffers as well. Um, these clips uh, are done in corners, shaped like this, um, or uh, like this. Um, we're only going to look at the lower corners. Um, it is possible to clip through upper corners, but that's not really practical, or at least uh, not that I know of. Um, it only works if there's a diagonal wall, um, which intersects with a uh, horizontal wall. It doesn't work on these types of corners, at least not that I know of, and it doesn't work at right angles. Um, the the um, the way it works is basically the same fundamentally as the outdoor clips in the basic wall clipping tutorial. Um, you want to embed yourself into the wall and then achieve either an upward or a downward teleport. But for these, you can't easily just, you know, penetrate the wall by uh, dash buffering into it. Uh, so we got to find a different way to get into the wall. Um, and we're going to do that with single frame movements to uh, wiggle our way in there. Um, so I want to cover a few points before uh, explaining the actual technique to do it. Um, this is going to be boring theory stuff. First, I want to talk about movement tech uh, in this game. Um, if you're moving left or upward, well, the movement pattern for normal walking alternates two pixels per frame and one pixel per frame. Um, if you're walking left or north, it starts at two pixels. If you're walking to the right or southward, it starts at one pixel per frame and then follows the same pattern. Um, since we're only going to be moving in uh, these situations uh, one frame at a time, um, if we're moving one frame left, it's two, and one frame right, it's only one pixel. Um, and that will come into play later. Um, I promise. I um, also want to explain the different ways to buffer movement. The most common and easy way to buffer one pixel movement is through what we call the select buffer, which is aptly named because we use the save and quit menu, which is accessed via the select button on your Super Nintendo or Super Famicom controller. Um, so the technique here is to bring up, you want to bring up the menu, um, and then you want to advance the game one frame by canceling the menu and then opening it back up again. Um, and of course, while we're doing this, we're just going to hold a directional input, as you can see at the bottom of the uh, screen there. The uh, directional input, or the input display is there, so you can see whatever uh, direction, or whatever inputs I'm pressing. Um, so you want to hold the directional input, cancel it, and then open it back up again to advance the game one frame at a time. And you'll only move uh, one frame. Um, I guess I forgot to mention this. Uh, diagonal movement, every single frame, with normal walking, where you're not, if you don't have your sword out, you're not carrying anything, and you're standing on normal ground, Diagonal movement will always move you one pixel um, on the x-axis and one pixel on the y-axis. So in this case, it's moving me one pixel upward and one pixel leftward. Um, you can see my x position and y position are listed uh, right here. So if I do it correctly, it should uh, uh, decrement each of those by one pixel. Yeah, if I do it successfully. Um, all right, to actually advance the game one frame. Oh, actually, uh, first, what I'm doing, uh, I press B to cancel the menu, but lots of other buttons work. Um, start works, Y work, I think every button works. Yeah, every button will cancel the menu. I like to use B, um, for whatever reason. It's just most natural and intuitive for me. Um, you want to press B, or whatever button you choose, to cancel the menu, and then press select again. Uh, either four or five frames afterwards. I meant to look that up so that I could be sure, but I'm not actually sure. It's either four or five frames. Um, if you press it too soon, like you press select immediately after you press uh, B to cancel the menu, 
it doesn't advance the game by one frame. It simply opens the uh, select menu up again. I'm trying to do it too fast and I'm failing. Yeah, but you can see when it doesn't work, when you don't move at all, that means that you brought the select menu up too fast. And if you move multiple pixels per frame like that, that means you're being too slow. Um, it's better to err on the side of uh, too fast than too slow. Um, because if you do it too fast, you can just try again. But if you do it too slow and you move too far, um, then you may have to start the entire clip over from the start, which can be frustrating. That's probably the most frustrating part about doing these kind of clips, is when you first start and you're just getting used to the rhythm, uh, having to start over every time you make a mistake is really annoying. Um, the other types of clips are sword buffering and dash buffering. At least those are the only other two I'm going to explain right now. Uh, with sword buffering, you want to hit your directional input, and then one frame afterwards, you want to slash your sword. Um, so if I'm doing these correctly, my X position, uh, as you can see in the lower right, will decrement by two pixels every time. Um, I'm not very good at it, but you get the idea. Um, and the reason that works is because um, Link doesn't move while slashing your sword. You know, the game automatically stops you. So if you press the directional input and then slash your sword, it stops you after, you know, one frame of movement, ideally. Um, that's pretty easy with lateral directions, and in most clips uh, that have lateral uh, movement, sword buffering is pretty easy and consistent, but for diagonal movement, it's a little more uh, difficult. A little harder to be consistent. Um, and the other, the other one is called dash buffering. For this one, you press dash and the directional input on the same frame, instead of uh, delaying it by one frame. This is the same uh, technique we use uh, for these uh, wall clips uh, that are shown uh, in the basic wall clipping tutorial on the overworld. That's a dash buffer, and usually one frame at a time into the wall, but that doesn't work here. Um, and same thing applies, uh, at least in my opinion, lateral movement is much uh, easier than uh, diagonal movement. Yeah, I can't even do it. Um, so yeah, that should be all you need to know. Well, really it takes practice, you know, you'll get the hang of the timings. You can pick whichever technique you like the most. Uh, select buffering, obviously, because you have to bring up the select menu every time you want to move. is slower than sword buffering, if you can sword buffer. Uh, but it is also a lot easier. So pick what you like and practice it. That's really the most important thing. Um, I guess now I'll cover the the theory for uh, for clipping. It's the same idea as the wall clips outdoors. You want to be eight pixels into the wall for an upward teleport, and then nine pixels in for a downward teleport. Um, and then you have to be on a specific uh, um, Y position to get the teleport. Um, on the outdoor walls, I showed that there was lots of uh, positions um, along the wall where you could do the teleports. The same probably applies on these walls, but we're going to use the lowest um, the lowest available pixel relative to the corners here. So we're just going to clip into the wall at the corner and then move up the slope a little bit in order to get where we need to be and then do the teleports. Um, for left walls like this and right walls, the technique is a little different, but I will explain both of them. Okay, I'm actually going to use frame advance instead of uh, instead of buffers, just so that I can make sure that the movement is consistent um, and doesn't uh, fail based on my uh, execution. Um, so the game sound is not going to play while the game is uh, paused like this. Um, the the beginning technique, you want to move diagonal for one frame at a time and then move downward for as long as you want. After you move diagonal, you can hold down as long as you want, but the diagonal movement always has to be one frame. Um, so as you can see here, you start to get into the wall deeper, or into the corner deeper than you otherwise would be able to. Um, typically on a lower left wall like this, you're going to see people go in three times um, before moving upward to a, a vulnerable pixel. Um, uh, these three pixels are the first three pixels of the clip, so this is the first three out of the eight or nine uh, that you want to clip. Um, after that, you want to move up left three times to get uh, here, 
And then from here you can actually move lateral into the wall. So I'll actually unpause the game so that you can uh, see this. Um, for this, uh, sword buffering is pretty safe, even if you're not very good at it. Um, well, in my opinion, this is uh, it's just easier to do lateral. Um, since we're three pixels into the wall now, we would want to get either uh, five or six more pixels into the wall. So what I, what I was talking about earlier about the movement tech actually is going to come into play here. Because we're moving leftward, the first pixel per frame is always going to be two pixels. I'm, I'm sorry, the first uh, amount of pixel movement per frame is always going to be uh, two pixels um, because of the way the pattern works. So if we use sword buffering, we can do three uh, um, left movements. Those should all be two pixels. Uh, and that'll get us uh, nine. That's three plus six for nine. If we wanted to move um, eight pixels in, however, for a... Uh, let me get back on the position. Uh, for a um, upward teleport, we need to move five from this position, which we can't do by doing staggered inputs like that. So in this case, we do want to do uh, select buffering, because since select buffering advances the game uh, only one frame at a time, the movement pattern uh, continues intact. So it'll be two pixels, then one pixel, then uh, two pixels for five total. And that'll put us eight into the wall. Um, so from here, after you get the amount of pixels that you want into the wall, you're gonna be three pixels up from the south wall, and then either eight or nine pixels into the wall, depending on whether you want an upward or downward teleport. You need to move up left one more frame, and then you hold down left for your teleport. That was an upward teleport, and then a downward teleport. The uh, inputs that you see on the screen here are actually uh, a couple frames behind the actual movement, so it might look a little, f a little funny, like he moves a little bit after the inputs disappear from the screen, but just trust me, that's uh, how it's supposed to look. Um, if you do select buffering and you don't want to do sword buffering, you can still move uh, six pixels. When you're moving leftward, um, you can just move four frames because that's two, one, two, one, and that equals six. Or you can move one frame at a time and then stop and let Link stand still so that the movement pattern resets. And then just move uh, two pixels uh, at a time each time. So you can do three select buffers if you stagnate them for six. Plus the original three makes nine. Then one up left. Uh, that was two. Let me try to do the whole thing with buffers just so you can see what it looks like. Oops. I'll probably try it a few times and then just uh, cut out the bad attempts. Was that three? I hope so. Okay, that was actually two frames of movement. That's actually something worth noting. I accidentally moved uh, two frames there, but because I'm aware that I did, I know that I only need to move one frame more to get where I want to be before doing the uh, the uh, left movement. I actually did four consecutive frames of movement there for six pixels for nine total, one up left, and then down left for a downward teleport, which in this case puts us uh, on the EG layer which is a topic for another day. I will go over that someday, just not now. All right. Now, alternatively here, uh, you can actually move four pixels into the wall at the beginning, and then the rest of it um, behaves the same. You move three pixels up the wall, and then you need either uh, four or five uh, pixels for the upward or downward teleport. This uh, way, um, uh, would lend for easier uh, select buffering for a downward teleport, because you'd only have to do three into the wall, or you could only do two um, stag staggered buffers uh, into the wall for an upward teleport. You don't usually see this, um, because the extra up, left, down is two extra inputs, as opposed to an extra single extra input up here, um, so it's um, not technically um, easier, it's not really less inputs, in fact I don't remember, uh, there was some positive to it, 
I think that it's just easier for um, if you do only select buffering and you don't want to have to delay them uh, for the uh, for the downward teleport, something like that. <laughs> I don't really remember. Um, yeah, but anyway, that should basically pretty much every wall of the same shape should behave the same way. So if you're ever in a situation where you want to clip through a corner that's shaped like this, it uh, it behaves the same. Now for these walls, it's a little different. The theory is still the same. It's still 8 pixels for an upward teleport and 9 pixels for a downward teleport. However, pretty much the entire process is done by doing single frame diagonals, followed by downward movements. And you do that pretty much for the entire duration of the clip. Um, so I'll actually try to execute this properly. I think that was 5. Six, and then something interesting happens up here. Uh, at the seventh uh, input, instead of just holding down, you can actually hold down right in order to uh, to move an additional pixel into the wall. Um, if you can hold down right and Link doesn't get kicked out of the wall, that means that you're on the eighth pixel. You can do it from the seventh pixel to give you an additional free pixel, or you can do eight buffers to put you onto the eighth pixel. Um, so from here, uh, you don't want to move, you want to move either 2 to 5 frames diagonal up the wall and then hold down right for your teleport. So from here, uh, that may have already been 2, but I'll do another one just to be safe. That may have been too much. Okay, that was an upward teleport. That was bad execution, but it worked out because there's such a wide uh, window for it to work. Um, I'll go ahead and do this with frame advance. Okay, that's seven, so you wiggle into the wall, you hold down right for the uh, the free pixel, and then once you get to this position, if you're sure you're safely on the eighth pixel, which you will be if you can move down right, you want to do upright, and then down one additional time to get on the ninth pixel, and then the exact same thing for the teleport, two to five frames um, upright, and then hold down right for your downward teleport, which again puts you below the layer which I will go over in the EG tutorial. I just wanted to use this room because it had two really convenient corners to show the technique. Um, I think that's basically everything that there is to it. Um, so I wanted to show some applications of this. Uh, this, um, this is often referred to as Meyer hookshot because you start in Meyer and then you clip through this corner into Hera, into the Tower of Hera, and then you clip from there into uh, Swamp, and then you get to keep any keys that you brought with you from Meyer because the game doesn't really uh, take into consideration. Well, it uh, figures what dungeon you're in based on what dungeon has been loaded, which is the one that you've entered, and doesn't unload it until you actually exit it. There's a lot of other uh, implications of that. I don't really want to go into too much detail, but if you go and kill like, if you clip into another dungeon and kill that boss, you'll get the original dungeon that you entered. Uh, you'll get the crystal drop from that dungeon, not from the, uh, the one that you clip into, because the game still has this dungeon technically loaded for a lot of those kind of, uh, those kind of things that it uh, does, whatever. It's not important. Anyway, um, I'm going to use frame advance just so that I can get through it pretty quickly. Um, since I already explained the technique, I don't really need to go over it as I'm doing it. This is a downward teleport. Um, so start with three uh, up left downs to get you into position, up left three times. Uh, this is uh, consecutive frames, we need six pixels, so we're going to go four frames uh, for six pixels into the wall for nine, and then up left once, and then down left for the downward teleport. Uh, this room right here is actually the fairy room, which exists in the Tower of Hera. Um, so now we're in the Tower of Hera, and then you do the same thing down here to uh, get into Swamp, and then you uh, grab the uh, big, or you grab the big chest from Swamp with the big key that you brought with you from Meyer, and then you can actually mirror back to Meyer because the game still thinks that that's where you are. Um, 
So that's one fun application. Um, what else do we have here? Oh yeah, this is the Kiki skip. This is probably one of the most important clips that there is in the whole game. Um, and this is done um, to get into the Palace of Darkness from the Light World, uh, actually from this cave here on Death Mountain, without needing to pay Kiki or go through a bunch of trouble to get there. Um, so I will actually try to do this one with sword buffers. So I won't be talking because it'll probably take me like 10 tries and I'll just show the one that actually worked. All right, here we go. All right, that did take a bunch of tries. <laughs> but that's what that looks like. I just wanted to, to have that there just so you could see what it looks like to uh, to do it purely with sword buffers. I'm not very good at it, though. Um, and now you're in uh, Palace of Darkness, and with the cave tile set, once again, the game sort of remembers where you started. If you don't ever exit or enter uh, an indoor location, it doesn't reload the... Uh, or unload and reload the location, so it still has a lot of the um, the things like the, the um, tile set and things, um, and also the light world uh, pots instead of the dark world skull pots, things like that. Um, there's a lot of other uh, weird things. Maybe I'll go over to that more in the the EG slash underworld manipulation in general tutorial, so that you can so I can explain some more of these details. But that's once again that's for another day. Um, this one here is um, one of the few examples of when you actually want to use an upward teleport for this clip. Um, so we're going to do the usual. Start with uh, three uh, buffers, three uh, pixels into the wall at the base here. Three up. And then since it's upward, we want to go uh, eight pixels total. So we need uh, five more pixels. So that's three uh, consecutive frames of movement. Up left and then down left teleport. This puts us up here. Um, we're actually still, the way that the game registers depth is kind of primitive. So we're actually still on the upper layer of the game, um, but we're over top of the lower area. So as you can see, I'm interacting with the, the higher portion of this wall as if I was standing on a higher uh, floor uh, than I actually am. Um, and then if you actually push against one of these walls, you actually jump to the lower layer from the upper layer. And another interesting thing here is that the way stairs behave, they'll always change your layer from whichever one you're on to the other. So it doesn't recognize that I'm coming from the side of the stairs that should be the top and put me on the bottom. Instead, it moves me from the lower layer back up to the top layer. So now I'm back on the upper layer of the, la of the game again. And I can actually walk through the stairs to get to the lower layer, um, which is the EG layer. And then you can jump back into the game, like such. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, this isn't a good example. I meant to change this. Um, I wanted to show that these clips are not just used indoors, and that they work in outdoor locations. So in corners of the same, uh, the same shape as the indoor ones, the same uh, um, combination of inputs should have the same effect. The teleport doesn't look exactly the same there. Um, it's it's probably because it's changing layers. It's putting you from a lower layer location to a top layer. Um, that's covered a little more in the uh, the basic wall clipping tutorial. Um, that is the exact same type of clip as doing it like this. It puts you in the exact same pixel Oops. and you do the same inputs um, afterwards for the teleport so it does the exact same thing. You can get an upward teleport here as well but it'll embed you into that wall and that'll be kind of weird. Um, what's next? This one. Oh yeah. These types of walls behave exactly the same as well. I'll actually do an upward teleport here because the downward teleport would put us through the transition. Actually... There we go. Teleports us upward. Doesn't really have any uh, effect here. I just wanted to show that these types of walls will behave the same. Um, 
This is another example of using select buffers or one frame movement instead of dash buffers for a clip that can be done with dash buffers. This one is um, oops. This is the DMA, the Death Mountain Ascent, um, which is an upward teleport through the screen's transition, which wraps you around and causes some weird effects. Um, this can be done without um, uh, boots. It can be select buffered. So I wanted to kind of go over that technique here as well. Um, first, I wanted to explain uh, how to improvise these clips, or at least how to find the starting position without actually knowing where it is. Um, and the way I do that is I'll stand what I believe to be a little bit too low. Um, oh, uh, one thing worth noting is the movement pattern of uh, 2 1, 2 1 pixels per frame moving upward. Um, if you hold diagonal into a, a vertical wall, it automatically sets your movement um, pattern to that um, to that pattern. Um, so if I select buffer here and I try to hold upright, if the game puts me um, moves me directly north, then that means that I wasn't high enough to start the clip. Um, it moves me two pixels north, so I like to move one uh, one frame south, which is one pixel south. Uh, I failed that time. Um, Start around there. There we go. It moved me straight north, so that's two pixels. So I want to move down one pixel. Which puts me one pixel higher than my original starting position. And then I try to do the same thing. Just move upright diagonal. And if you move straight up, then you move down one frame again. And basically you're testing the first upright diagonal at um, each individual pixel moving upward north. Usually it only takes two or three tries to uh, get on the good pixel, which I believe is this, yeah. And then once you move upright, then you know you're starting the clip. So you want to just alternate upright and downright. There we go. Um, I th think it's eight times? I actually don't know exactly. I usually just look at uh, Link's position, yeah, right there. And then you just uh, hold upright and then buffer until you find a position that you know will get you the upward teleport. And then you just do the teleport and you do the uh, DMA like that. Um, all right, this is um, an upward teleport. I use this one in um, reverse boss order. Um, I'm gonna use just, just do frame advance just to show it. Um, but it's, how many was that? That was enough. Um, I wasn't counting. Um, it's an upward teleport that sends you uh, through the screen transition like this, except it, instead of, uh, oops, that was a mistake. <laughs> okay, well, I'm stuck. Let's try that again. Um, instead of actually putting you all the way through the screen transition where it wraps you around to the bottom of the screen and causes weird effects like the DMA does, it actually puts you right below the screen transition where you trigger the transition and the game puts Link on the um, uh, screen above at the bottom of it. There are some strange effects, um, like for example the uh, left side of the screen doesn't uh, look correct there obviously. Um, I guess that's another thing that I want to cover sometime. Maybe I can go over it now. Uh, just some, some information about why that happens. Um, the way that, uh, hmm, the way that the map is laid out, you're never meant to transition from the, the screen below here to the one above here. There's a transition here between these two screens where the camera is supposed to lock. It locks over here. It hits a trigger where the camera stops following Link as you move towards the transition. However, on this location, that's around here somewhere, but that doesn't exist. So we actually skip the trigger, or we don't touch it at all. Um, oops. So it doesn't know to, uh, to lock the camera. And, and the camera doesn't know what to show beyond this point because there's nothing there. It should be a screen transition. 
um, there should be nothing. Like, the camera should stop, so you should never see that. So what it shows is what's on the farthest right of this screen instead, by accident. So it shows the stuff that's over there. And then if you walk into it when it's in that weird state, uh, it will cause a soft lock. It will wrap the screen infinitely, and that's bad. Well, anyway, don't worry about that. Uh, if something like that happens, just don't walk into it. Typically, you can walk away from it to uh, relock the camera to fix the the, um, the effect there, and then the transition will behave as normal. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess that's everything. That was kind of a long one. Um, hopefully that's because there was lots of good information, and hopefully people will actually find this useful. Uh, so, yeah, there will be more to come. I want to do one that shows uh, the underworld details, specifically for the purpose of EG and indoor YBAs. But that will actually, um, it'll make it more uh, evident why clips like the one from Meyer to Hera to Swamp uh, work the way they do. Uh, once you understand how the underworld map works, um, it's pretty simple, but that's, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make sure to, to explain that stuff well so that you can improvise with this stuff a little better on your own. Um, yeah, so that's all for me for now, and I guess I will see you in the next one.